Okay, it's right at 930. So to honor your time uh, and try to get this in before the weather hits, I'm going to go ahead and begin with this uh, training. So again, good morning to you. Um, we appreciate you being here today. This webinar is going to introduce the new clinical experience records features that are being released in ECOS. And we will provide training on the functionality of those features. You are in attendance this morning because you may be responsible for reporting data in ECOS for your program, or you may be responsible for various aspects of clinical experiences and or field supervision. We will try to cover everything thoroughly today. However, we know that you may have additional questions, so please ask and we will respond after the webinar and or in a follow-up FAQ document. Please note that your questions will be captured using the question section on the GoToWebinar toolbar. Questions or comments placed in chat will not be retained. This webinar is being recorded and the recording and related Frequently Asked Questions document will be posted on the Program Provider Resources page on the TEA website following the webinar. Please note that hereafter in this webinar, I will refer to an educator preparation program as an EPP. The EPP is the entity that houses all the different certification programs, such as the undergraduate teacher program, the post -bac principal program, the university-based alternative superintendent program, and the like. Also, when I refer to you, I am referring to your EPP since you are here as a representative of your EPP. Okay, this slide says resources for assistance. Uh, please raise your hand if you can see this slide. I just want to make sure this deck is functioning properly. Thank you very much. TEA staff that are available to assist you with the clinical experience record screens and the updated observation screens are listed here. Note that Kina is going to be the point person on questions and issues so that we can closely monitor issues and assist, assist you as you become more familiar with these new features. While you can always reach out to any of us with requests for support at any time, it would be helpful if you'll reach out to Kina if you have specific questions or problems around the new update to ECOS. I'm Lori Ayers and I'm going to be your presenter today. These are some additional resources you may use as you learn the functionality of the new screens in ECOS. You may submit a help desk ticket and of course attach any upload files or screenshots that may be needed for TEA staff to support you. Additionally, you may want to consult the technical manual, which will be updated and posted concurrent with the go live date of the cl clinical experience records pages in ECOS. Note that published below the technical manual on the Program Provider Resources page is information about clinical experience records and links to some templates which are helpful for creating CSV upload files. In October, the State Board for Educator Certification, or SBEC, approved this new collection of data related to clinical experiences. They discussed the collection at a series of meetings, and the collection was also discussed at stakeholder meetings throughout the year. Through those discussions and through our IT build processes, we've been able to shape and streamline this collection. Let's take a quick look about why this collection is important and how it will benefit EPPs and the SBEC. First, let's think about what we are documenting in the clinical experience records pages in ECOS. <clears throat> Candidates who are pursuing certification as teachers must complete either clinical teaching or an internship. Clinical teaching may be 70 full days or 140 half days. 
An internship is one full school year. Note that candidates enrolled in undergraduate programs must complete the clinical teaching option, but candidates enrolled in post -bac or alternative certification programs may complete either clinical teaching if the program is approved to offer it or an internship. Candidates who are pursuing certification in non-teacher master's level programs, such as principal, superintendent, school counselor, educational diagnostician, school librarian, and reading specialist in either the post -bac or alternative certification route must complete a practicum of 160 hours or more. The practicum may be completed while the candidate is employed in that role holding an intern or probationary certificate. In all cases, these clinical experiences must be supervised by a field supervisor employed by the EPP and must be supported by campus personnel who are qualified and trained to mentor the candidate throughout the experience. In all cases, the field supervisor must provide formal observations of candidates in these experiences and report the observations in ECOS on the observations pages. To summarize, it is the clinical teaching, internship, and practicum that are the clinical experiences that will be documented in ECOS. An important note for teacher programs is that the 30 or more hours of early field-based experiences that we call FBE will not be documented in ECOS at this time. EPPs will continue to retain evidence of those 30 or more hours as well as all other records of candidate admission and preparation in their internal EPP files. Currently, limited information is gathered about clinical experiences, and the same information isn't gathered about the different types of clinical experiences. <clears throat> Current collections are inadequate to allow EPPs to make connections with other candidate data. Current collections don't allow EPPs to submit information about clinical experiences that they are required to track. The SBAC has growing interest in clinical experiences, but EPPs have limited systematic ways to report. And, Research highlights importance of clinical experiences, but current collection provides a limited view. Due to these conditions, the SBEC approved this new collection. By gathering this information, the data will now be able to be matched with other data and visualized in the upcoming EPP dashboards. This will allow EPPs to understand all the clinical placements and experiences. Additionally, by having all of this data about clinical experiences stored in ECOS, it will be easy for EPPs and TEA to review this information during reviews or if EPPs have other use for the data. Gathering this information will also allow the SBEC to better understand clinical experiences and have good data when they make decisions. And finally, this will allow for EPPs, TEA, and others to better understand clinical experiences. <clears throat> the information that will be recorded in the clinical experience records that you create in ECOS will be the assignment type and the assignment begin and end dates which have been moved out of the formal observation record, and the assignment location, which is currently entered when recommending the intern or probationary certificate, and the name and TEA ID number of the campus personnel that is assigned to support the candidate, which would be the cooperating teacher, mentor, or site supervisor as applicable to the assignment type. You will see as we go through some screenshots and features of the new pages that when possible, ECOS will auto-populate these data from other places in ECOS. For example, 
If a teacher candidate is completing an internship, the assignment begin and end dates will auto populate for you from the effective dates on the candidate certificate. And the assignment location will auto populate from the assignment location you identified when you recommended the intern or probationary certificate. Let's now take a closer look at the new clinical experience records pages in ECOS and their functionality. After that, I'll go over some of the validations, error messages, and warning messages that you may encounter. And along the way, I'll point out some new features you'll encounter in some existing screens. The new clinical experience records pages are located as the first two menu options under the ASEP drop-down menu in the ECOS Entity Screen screen just above the current observation pages. There is an upload option similar to the upload options that exist for observations, admissions, and finisher records. The clinical experience records option allows you to create a record for one candidate manually or to locate a record for one candidate, or to generate a report of records for multiple candidates. As with other records under the ASEP menu, the clinical experience records must be created in the year in which they occur, which is the current unlocked year. In other words, you will not be able to add a record for a previous year or a future year, which is existing functionality for the ASEP menu options. The clinical experience records option will take you to a screen that you may filter by candidate TEA ID number, by assignment begin date, or by academic year. The resulting screen will give you the records for one candidate or the records for all candidates that fall in the date or date range selected in the filter. On this screen, you would filter by TEA ID number to find or create records for one candidate. You can see on the screenshot that I have not yet created a clinical experience record for I'm a teacher. When you add a clinical experience record for a candidate, you will land on a page that at the top allows you to select the record type. The options are clinical teaching, non-teacher, or teacher internship. The clinical teaching option is selected to enter a record for a teacher candidate who is completing clinical teaching. If the teacher candidate is completing an internship while holding an intern or probationary certificate, the teacher internship option is selected to enter that record. If the candidate is pursuing certification in a non-teacher class, such as a principal or superintendent, the non-teacher option is selected to create the record. Let's look at an example. If I'm a teacher is a teacher candidate who will be completing the required clinical experience through the clinical teaching option, I will select clinical teaching as the record type. The details section below will then display the fields that I will need to enter to create this record. Santa Claus is the cooperating teacher in whose classroom IMA will complete the clinical teaching assignment. The TEA ID for Santa Claus will not be required this year, but starting September 1st of 2023, it will be required. I will get a warning message now because I'm not including the TEA ID for Santa Claus, the cooperating teacher, but the record will ultimately be created. As I create this record, I continue to populate the required fields by identifying one or more certificate areas pursued during the experience. 
In this case, IMA is pursuing the Science 7 through 12 certificate, but I can also choose an additional certificate area, such as a special education supplemental, from a checklist drop down menu if that is applicable for IMA. I should identify all certificates that will be pursued during IMA's clinical experience. Next, I identify the assignment type as CLIN, C L I N. There is an additional assignment type called CLIN EXC, but I'm not using that option because my EPP does not have a clinical teaching exception approved by the State Board for Educator Certification. Next, I select the clinical experience model that applies to IMA's assignment, which is the 14 weeks option. I do not choose the approved aid option because that is for candidates who've been approved to complete clinical teaching while employed as an educational aid. This model corresponds to the rule in 19 TAC 228.35K. And I do not choose the approved exemption model because that model is selected when reporting candidates who are exempt from the clinical experience. These would include candidates pursuing JROTC certification or those who have received the educational aid exemption. This model corresponds to the rule in 19 TAC 228.35 L1 and 2. Finally, I enter the assignment begin date and end date, which are required, as well as the location of the assignment. After I've performed a quick quality check on my work, I click on the Save button and the record is created. Note the field for the LEA district name has an arrow that denotes a drop down menu. This is a cool feature, so let's take a quick look at that drop down menu. When identifying the, the local education agency or LEA district in which IMA will complete the assignment, I can easily select it from a list of locations by using the drop down menu. This is the same list as the list that is generated in the intern and probationary certificate recommendation screens. The column headers will sort to allow me to easily find and select the location of the clinical teaching assignment. But for your convenience, the list defaults to the LEA district name in alpha order. After the record has been saved with the required information, I can then review the record, which will display as above. As you can see on the screenshot, I filtered by academic year, and IMAS record is the only one I've created so far. As I create more records, they will continue to populate the list on this screen. And let me remind you, if you have questions, please put them in the question feature so that we can address those questions um, as we um, at the end of the webinar. I'm just gonna check the questions real quick and make sure they're recording. Give me just a second. Okay. Good. I'm seeing questions show up. Thank you. So I just demonstrated how to create a manual clinical experience record for a candidate who is completing clinical teaching. Let's extend our thinking for a moment and look at the other two record type options I could have selected for the clinical experience. If I had attempted to add a teacher internship record for IMA instead of a clinical teaching record, I would receive an error message that IMA has not been issued an intern or probationary certificate because this record type option will automatically look for a certificate. I would then think to myself, oh yes, IMA is in the undergrad program and does not yet hold a bachelor's degree, so cannot be completing an internship. I would then cancel out of this screen and then select clinical teaching as the record type. Okay. 
If I do have a candidate such as Ivana Teach, who holds an intern or probationary certificate, the teacher internship record type will generate this screen that I would use to enter the clinical experience record for Ivana Teach. You can see the certificate name, assignment begin and end dates, and LEA district location of the assignment are automatically pulled in from Ivana's intern certificate. The assignment begin and end dates are the effective dates on the certificate. So let's return now to IMA Teach. In another scenario, if I was entering a record for IMA, who is a teacher candidate, and I accidentally chose the non-teacher record type instead of the clinical teaching record type, I would get a manual entry screen because the record type option for non-teacher candidates, such as principals, does not initially look for a certificate. The practicum int and practicum pro clinical experience model options are selected as applicable for those candidates completing a practicum while employed in the role and holding an intern or probationary certificate. As with the previous screen, if I choose the practicum int or practicum pro option for a non-teacher, I will get the error message that the candidate has no certificate issued because when selecting either of those clinical experience models, the system will look for a certificate. I still should not be able to create a practicum record for IMA though, because she is a teacher candidate and the candidate certificate options on the non-teacher drop-down menu reflect non-teacher certificate areas. So I will cancel out of this screen and go back and select the correct record type initially so that I can get, I can generate the appropriate screen for IMA, which is the clinical teaching record type. Before we leave this slide, take a quick note of the similarities between the screens for the non-teacher record type and the clinical teaching record type. That is because similar information must be reported for all types of clinical experiences. Many of you have been saving clinical experience data in anticipation of adding them when these clinical experience records pages go live. To upload records for multiple candidates now and in future, you will select the Upload Clinical Experience option on the ASAP drop-down menu. On the resulting screen, you will choose the record type for the clinical experience records you plan to upload. Each record type selected will yield a unique screen that will have instructions for uploading clinical experience data for the specific record type. You would then browse for your CSV formatted file, select the correct file, and then upload as you are accustomed to doing with the other upload options under the ASAP menu. If you want to upload clinical teaching records for one or more candidates, you will select the clinical teaching record type and the screen will result. Let's look at some features of this screen. First, it reminds us that the candidate must have an admission record and a record on the finisher records list as either other enrolled or finisher. This is one of the validations and an error message will be generated if one or both of these other records do not already exist when you attempt the upload. Second, there are instructions on how to format the upload file. To the right of the upload format instructions, there are instructions for options we can use to complete each of the required fields. Note that the CERT license ID table is an active link that gives you a list of all of your approved certificate areas, and the LEA district link generates a list of possible campuses or districts in which the candidate could complete the assignment. You will recognize both of these lists as they currently exist on other screens within the ECOS Entities menu options. And finally, <clears throat> there are examples of what our upload files will look like.
If you want to upload a practicum record for a non-teacher candidate, such as an educational diagnostician, and you select the non-teacher record type, this screen will result. You can see that the information is provided that is similar to the information you just saw on the clinical teaching instructions. But the information is specific to a non-teacher record. And this is an intentional pause to allow you to look over the screen. I'll move forward in just a minute. To upload records for teacher candidates who are completing a teacher internship while holding an intern or probationary certificate, you will choose the teacher internship option. The resulting screen is in a similar format as the previous two screens we just viewed. However, you can see it is much shorter. That is because most of the information you would need to upload for teacher internship records will be automatically populated from data that you provided when recommending the intern or probationary certificate. As a result, when uploading teacher internship records, you will only need to identify the candidate, the mentor, and the assignment type and the system will do the rest of the work for you. You will see all of the relevant data for a record when you access your records via the clinical experience records link. Remember there are three possible assignment types for interns, the INT or intern certificate, the PRO or probationary certificate, and the PROX or probationary extension. Also, remember the PROX is automatically assigned as an assignment type when the candidate is issued a second probationary certificate. So when identifying the assignment type for the upload, you will need to know whether this is the candidate's first or second probationary certificate. As is customary, you can use the educator search option to look up the candidate's certificate history. I want to take a moment to point out a cool new feature. Let's say, oops, I accidentally uploaded a file of teacher internship records on the clinical teacher records upload screen. I obviously got an error message that the file failed. There is now an upload file status section at the bottom of the upload clinical experience records instructions page. This will show any files that have failed within the last seven days. So let's examine that cool feature more closely. I can see by the name of my upload file that I did indeed upload my internship candidates by mistake. I can click the error file name and see the file, and I can also see in the status file the reason for the fail. In this case, because the teacher internship file is formatted differently than the clinical teaching file, I got the dreaded missing delimiters error message. At the top of the upload file status section, you'll see an upload status link that will take you straight to your old familiar screens that you usually access via the upload status link under the ASAP menu. Formal observations that are reported under the ASAP menu occur during the clinical experience. So it makes sense that the observation data and clinical experience data are linked in ECOS. You must have a clinical experience record in place to be able to upload an observation. The two records are linked through the observation date and the assignment begin and end dates and or the assignment types identified in the clinical experience record. The links to reach your observation screens remain as they were before this clinical experience record update. 
but the screens may have had a bit of a makeover. Additionally, the observation screens are much the same as before this update. However, you can see you will no longer be adding the assignment begin and end date when you create those records because that information is now collected when you create the clinical experience records. We've added another feature we hope you'll find helpful. In your clinical experience records report, you can link directly to the observations for a candidate. I know during user acceptance testing on this update, this was a very useful feature that allowed me to add a record and then jump over and create an observation record for the candidate. I could also jump to a specific candidate and see all of that candidate's observations. So let's examine that link more closely. The top screenshot on this page is the clinical experience record that I created earlier for I'm a teacher. When I click on the link at the end of her row, I will jump to the candidate observation screen that shows me all of IMA's observations. In this case, the bottom screenshot of the candidate observation screen shows that I got an error message that says IMA does not have observations. From the candidate observation screen, I can manually add observations for IMA by checking on the add record button. Let's look at manually entering an observation record. If I want to enter a record for a candidate, this is an observation record. If I want to enter an observation record for a candidate, I can use either the link in the clinical experience records page or search for the candidate TEA ID using the observations page under the ASEP drop-down menu. Whichever path I choose to get there, the screen you see in front of you is my destination. This screen looks much the same as before. When I select the TEA ID of the field supervisor, the screen will auto-populate the name of the field supervisor from my field supervisor list that is under the ASAP menu. I can also see at the bottom the assignment type and assignment begin and end dates that I previously recorded in the clinical experience record. This candidate are also auto-populated. I've added my data for the observation record that I wish to create. I can see that my field supervisor name auto-populated as promised, but I had to add the field supervisor to my field supervisor list first. I must note that the field supervisor here is Jack Ayers, who is my 100-pound long-haired German Shepherd. He's happy to be a test subject for me when testing in ECOS, and I know he'd be happy to be an educator if he was not a dog. Note also that my observation date must be within the assignment begin and end dates and also must be within the unlocked year in ASAP. As a reminder, observations must be added into ECOS in the reporting year in which they occur. Depending on when the assignment falls in the candidate's training schedule, the assignment begin or end date may be before or after the current unlocked year, but the observation date itself can only be added when the ASAP year is unlocked. This is existing functionality that will be retained with this new update. The observation record will populate and present nicely in the candidate's observation list. Using the icons at right, you may edit the record if needed or delete the whole record. Note here that if you add the incorrect observation date, you'll need to delete the record and create a new one as the observation date is a field that cannot be edited. 
And I'll pause here for just a moment to remind you to post your questions in the questions section um, so that we can grab those questions and create an FAQ for you. This is a lot of new information and I wanna make sure everyone is, is clear and concrete on how to use these features. There are some safeguards or what we call validations built into ECOS that you need to be aware of when working with clinical experience records and observations records. Some are existing and some are new with this update. As I mentioned earlier, a clinical experience record must exist before an observation can be added for the candidate. To create the clinical experience record for the candidate, the candidate must have an admission record with your EPP. And if you created the admission record, by default, the candidate will have the enrollment record on the finisher records list as required. The records must reflect the same class of certificate pursued, such as teacher or principal or superintendent. In other words, you will receive errors if you create an admission record for a teacher candidate and then upload the clinical experience record for that candidate as a principal candidate. This feature actually helps keep records clean and accurate. The candidate must have a record on the finisher records list for you to upload an observation. This is existing functionality that should not be an issue because the admission record, which is created first in the process, will automatically create the other enrolled record on the finisher records list. The observation date must fall within the assignment begin and end dates and must be within the unlocked reporting year. This is existing functionality that is not changing. That means records must be created in the year in which they occur, which must also be within the unlocked year. After you have added an observation for a candidate, Neither the candidate's clinical experience record nor the field supervisor name can be deleted from your records. Currently, once a field supervisor is tied to an observation, that field supervisor cannot be removed from your field supervisor list in ECOS. That same logic is applied to the clinical experience record. What that means is if the candidate is in the clinical experience and changes location or mentor, you will need to create a new record for the new experience instead of editing or deleting the old record. The messages you will receive from ECOS are color-coded and have explanatory verbiage. The successful action will generate a green message that identifies success. A warning will be yellow. Warnings do not fail actions such as uploads and are really added as reminders for you. You should read the yellow warnings since they are reminders, but they should not adversely impact the action you were trying to take in ECOS. The warning message on this screen reminds us that the cooperating teacher TEA ID is missing from your upload and that the TEA ID will be required effective 9-1-2023. The red message that identifies error is just that. Whatever was the problem in the action you were taking, stop the action from occurring successfully. The error message should identify the error for you. And if it's an error in an upload, it should identify the line within the file in which the error happened. We have attempted to think of all possible errors that could happen and have pre-coded those related messages in the system for your convenience. However, I'm sure there is something we have not thought of. So if you see an error message that does not make sense, please let us know and we'll help you sort it out. As you can imagine, developing ECOS updates to address all of the possible operational aspects in EPP world is sometimes challenging. 
There are some unique circumstances that we have predicted, and then there may be some we have not foreseen. For example, if your candidate has two assignments in their clinical experience that cannot be observed in the same classroom, for example, if you have a, a teacher candidate who has two preps, four hours of math courses, teaching four hours of math and three hours of computer science, then you would create one clinical experience record for each assignment that would have different cooperating teacher or mentor identifications, but the same assignment beginning and end dates. Or let's say you have a candidate who's completing the clinical experience in an approved out-of-state placement. You would then select as the LEA or district location for the assignment, the option on the drop-down list that says TEA approved out-of-state placement. Or if you are creating a clinical experience record for a candidate who is exempt from the clinical experience, such as a JROTC candidate or someone who um, is part of the educational aid exemption, these individuals would not have a district location because they're not completing clinical teaching, they're exempt. So you would select as their location, TEA approved JROTC educational aid exemption. If you attempt to use these new updates and they are not working for you, please let us know because there may be nuances of the functionality that I've not covered here that will work in your circumstance. If not, there may be a workaround for you or at worst case, TEA may also be able to assist by accessing or creating records through our admin screens. So let's recap by thinking about processing a candidate through your EPP. It all begins with an admission record. First, after the candidate has accepted in writing your formal written offer of admission, you will create the admission record within seven days of the formal admission date that is in the written admission offer. The other enrolled status on the finisher records list automatically populates for you courtesy of the admission record. Next, when the candidate has completed the pre-service requirements and is ready to begin the clinical experience portion of the training, you will create the clinical experience record. And finally, as your observations are completed, you will be able to upload or manually add them. And you may review all of your work using the reports features within each of these ASEP actions. This screen shows a timeline of dates that you may use for planning purposes. You'll note the December rollout target is moved to early January. We thought this would be helpful for EPPs as many of you are out of office for holiday breaks starting mid-December. For now, go ahead and upload all of your observation data from the fall 2022 clinical experiences. You can also take this time to finish prepping your clinical experience records upload files for candidates currently in clinical experiences for fall 2022. And if you know the information for candidates beginning clinical experiences in spring 2023, you can include those on the upload files you are preparing now. As pointed out previously, once the clinical experience records pages are live, you will not be able to report any observations if there is not a clinical experience record in place for the candidate. Also, as mentioned previously, you will not be required to report the TEA ID of the cooperating teacher, mentor, or site supervisor at this time, but it will be a required field beginning September 1st of 2023. At that time, the system will validate the name and TEA ID number are correct from records that are in ECOS. And finally, as is customary, all observations completed in 22-23 for all teacher and non-teacher candidates must be in ECOS by September 15th of 23. 
After the 22-23 ASEP year locks, you will not be able to add any more observations for dates that fall in 22-23. As a reminder, we will update the technical manual with information and step-by-step -step instructions for entering clinical experience records. We will update this manual at the same time as we update ECOS with these new developments. We also have the template CSV files available for you currently on the Program Provider Resources page. If you have questions, please submit a help desk ticket. This will conclude our training for today. On behalf of the educator preparation staff at TEA, I wanna thank you for attending. I hope you found this information helpful as we introduce the new ECOS updates. We will post a frequently asked questions document with answers to all of the questions asked today, along with the recording of this training on the program provider resources page on the TEA website. You may contact your assigned specialist if you have additional questions, but it is preferred for you to direct specific issues and questions to Kena Sandlin or to Lori Ayers using the contact information provided earlier or to the preparations program tile in the help desk. Please take a moment before we end the webinar to record any final questions that you may have. And we can capture those questions at the end of the webinar and we will put our FAQ document together and respond to your questions then. I'll pause while you do so. I'm reviewing these questions. Uh, this question says, does this start with fall 2022 clinical teaching? And the answer is yes, it does. You should be collecting that information now um, in preparation to upload observations if necessary after the first of the year, but you can upload those observations now for the fall 2022 clinical teaching, but you'll wanna enter their clinical experience records um, for the fall 2022 clinical teachers uh, in January when these go live. Thank you for that question. This question says, how do you note a split assignment between two teachers during clinical teaching in the system? Hmm. I don't know about between two teachers, but if a clinical teacher has two assignments, such as let's say, seven weeks in second grade and seven weeks in fifth grade, then you would create two clinical experience records, different cooperating teacher names, um, same assignment start and end date, because it's all one 14 week assignment. Okay, all righty. Haven't seen too many more questions come in. It looks like they've slowed down. So I'll go ahead and end the webinar now. We will get the, all of these questions. And as I said, we'll put an FAQ together and put them out there for you. And if you have additional questions after the webinar and you wanna send them to Kina or to me, Lori Ayers, um, you can do so and we'll add those to the FAQ document as well. Um, and if you'll just put in the in the help desk ticket or in the email subject line FAQ for clinical experience records, then we can easily grab those and, and put those with the rest of the questions. All right. 
Well, y'all have a wonderful day. Uh, we appreciate you tuning in. And if you're in a bad weather area, again, please stay safe um, and join, enjoy your holiday as well.